feel free to be very loud and excited today. We have the lovely Bobby Pilata from Bobby P Media. He's filming for us today. Thank you, Bobby. <laughs> So, uh, in order to prevent Bobby from having to give us a laugh track, we need you to just really <laughs> fill the room. Uh, I do want to just give you a, a, a slight note that our dear friend Bobby here, we like to hire artists. We want to pay people for their time and build up the economy the best that we can. And this kind man is doing this today just because he loves us. And we couldn't afford it on this show. <laughs> We love Bobby, and actually, uh, he's one of the sponsors of our production. We are here in our beautiful new space, which is still currently in transition. It's, a, it's a been a dance studio for the last year. I started this company in 2020 on Zoom, because it seemed like uh, lockdown pandemic time was a great time to start a theater company. Um, but uh, it, it began because I had these wonderful parents and children who wanted a teacher, and I wanted kids to teach, and it was a, a very loving fit. And so I feel very fortunate that nine months ago, we started in the basement downstairs in person, and here we are nine months later with the love and support of the Historic Trust and Bobby P Media. We have all this beautiful intelligent lighting and curtains and air conditioners and everything else. So thank you, Bobby, for everything you do to support us. Thank you so much. Um, also a special thank you to the Camus High School Art Department. The reason why we have all this art for Murder at the Art Show is because they used it as their final project at the end of the school year. So we love to uh, thank the high school artists who made all the art for us. Um, and of course, my amazing community of parents and students, we literally are only here because this community said we want this company to exist. And so uh, thank you to all of you who have helped me out so much, Wendy and Tanya and uh, uh, Katie, of course, and everybody else here. You guys have just been tremendous, and I'm grateful to you. Um, I want to tell you about our campaign. As always, pass the mic. This is our scholarship fund that we build up. Our goal is to have 100 students fully funded by 2025. We are not interested in um, telling children they can't have access to the arts because of money. Um, I want everybody here. And so uh, if you have a few pennies to drop in the scholarship fund, www.downstagecenter.org building up that fund so that we can support as many kids as possible, particularly with summer camp coming. Uh, so we are excited to offer those scholarships. Pass the mic. Um, we are filming today. Be loud, be excited. This is a show in which we want you to use your phones. Uh, you can take pictures, you can post about us. Don't stand up in front of people because that's hard to see around you. Um, but do, uh, you, can, you can take all the photos you want. Our playbill is digital. There are QR codes around the room. You can scan that and use your playbill. You're going to need it. The characters are going to require you to participate today. And there might be a DCP gift certificate in it for you at the end. Uh, so uh, you're going to help us solve the mystery. We have a bumbling art detective who doesn't know what he's doing, and he's going to ask you for help. Uh, so make sure you have access to your playbill. Um, uh, they will tell you when to use it, you'll know. Um, you can also get it at our website, uh, downstagecenter.org. If you go to the performances page, you can find it there as well. Um, and if you need a minute for that, that QR code, that's totally fine by me. Um, so use your phones, have some fun. These kids, this is their final performance of the school year. They've been working their tukuses off all year long. I'm incredibly proud of them. They've done a great job. Thank you so much for being here today. Let's have a great time. I give you Murder at the Art Show. Thank you so much. Which one? <laughs> Does 
doesn't matter. They're all a nightmare. <laughs> what would possess a man to paint something like this? You never know what inspires an artist. I'm thinking tragedy, disappointment, and humiliation. Not a fun guy on a date. Whatever munches inspiration, the scream is a masterful expression of anxiety. I prefer a masterful expression of serenity. Such as, uh, tap with that kin cannon. No! <laughs> oh! Oh! You know how I feel about Tabitha's paintings? Little gnome houses are creepy. Little cottages in the court forest. Ugh. Everything Tabitha paints is weird. What about Paxton Haddock? Now you're talking. I'll take Paxton Haddock any day. Are you speaking of the artist or her art? I played the fifth. You can share your feelings with both artists after they arrive. I have a little surprise planned for Paxton. I'll fill you in on the details later. I forgot to ask, how was the Bee Gees tribute concert the other night? A major disappointment. It wasn't a night performance at all. It was during the afternoon. Wasn't it billed as a night with the Bee Gees? My point exactly. Part of an afternoon is not one night. When I complained to management, they said it was a demographics issue. <laughs> what did that mean? People who go to Bee Gees tribute concerts tend to nod off during the evening shows, and applause goes over much better than snoring. <laughs> anyway, during the intermission, I saw Marianne Manet at the oxygen bar, and she was completely undone. Because the concert was a matinee? That, and because she almost lost her Monet. Marianne Manet? Lost her Monet at the matinee? <laughs> Almost. Though not at the matinee. Where then? How did this happen? Does she still have the painting? It was almost sold without her knowledge. But yes, she still has her mysterious Claude Monet painting. <laughs> That's a relief. Introducing that painting to the world will put the Harriet Anderson Gallery on the map. If that painting is everything Marianne says it is. I can't imagine it's not. As no one has ever seen the painting, it does make me wonder. I mean, how many times have you heard the story of a masterpiece being found in a junk pile and then being conveniently hidden for several decades? It was supposedly authenticated by an art expert and valued as priceless. The whole business is suspect. There Marianne is, visiting galleries in Europe, and out of the blue, a representative from an unnamed collector called Mr. X offers to sell her an unseen Monet on the condition she keep it hidden for ten years in order to increase its value. How sketchy is that story? Do you believe it? I don't disbelieve it. She insisted the man was very convincing. That's where a buff artists make their money. They sound convincing. I say the painting is either fake or stolen. It doesn't even have a name. Marianne has given it a name. She said she will reveal the name when the painting is introduced on day two of our art event, Brushstroke with Greatness. Oh. <laughs> According to my calendar, she has about seven years to go if she's going to honor her promise to keep it hidden. Well, it's not about the money. Marianne said she wanted to do something special for the gallery. She's lucky she still has it. She has one of those electronic digital assistants. I think it's called Medusa, it's great cell phone calls. I know the one. It answers the phone, plays music, tells jokes. <laughs> Does anything you ask? Anyway, since word has gotten around about her showing, her phone has been ringing off the hook from buyers. And the most disgusting of all, Blake. No, not Blake Slocum. Yes, Blake Slocum. <laughs> He pretended to be all lovey-dovey, acting as if their former relationship would persuade Marianne into selling the painting to him. I'm glad Marianne didn't fall for his slimy ways. Oh, no, of course not. She completely lost her breakfast and threw up into the phone. <laughs> Blake Slocum. I don't believe it. I know. The human embodiment of a dung beetle. That weasel, that two-timer, that heartbreaker. Heartbreaker? Yes, heartbreaker, love crusher, hope smasher. <laughs> Are you saying you still have a thing for Blake? I don't hold it against you anymore, but Blake dumping me for you has left a wound in my heart that never healed. Never healed? Oh, then you do 
still have a thing for him? No! And you say you don't hold against me, but are you sure? Yes! Besides, we have to be okay now, don't we? I work for you. You're letting me show my work! That doesn't sound reassuring. <laughs> Confess something to you. If you're going to tell me you were the one who sent me all those dreadful death threats after I started dating Blake, I would rather not know. <laughs> oh, for crying out loud! <laughs> <laughs> it was you! I couldn't help myself. I was staring into the abyss of spinsterhood. You were 19. <laughs> but I felt 25. <laughs> you wrote were horrible. Only some. They were all meant to be horrible. <laughs> I was in my horrible phase. I was robbed of my self-esteem. <laughs> it wasn't until Blake dumped you for Marianne that my will to live returns, but I can make fun of you. Oh, great. <laughs> Besides, I'm sick of ice cream. That's when I turned to art to deal with my depression. <laughs> oh, that makes a lot more sense to me now. <laughs> Let's get back to your main point. What does this have to do with Marianne's Monet? Like I said, Marianne's phone had been ringing off the hook from buyers. She thought maybe some of the calls could have been from the person who sold her the paint scene in the first place. Uh, Mr. X? If not Mr. X himself, maybe someone fronting for him? I mean, she couldn't be sure there were so many calls. Finally, she had enough and yelled, Sell the Monet! Just like that, she slammed down her phone. A day later, Blake called, only this time Marianne was away from her office. But do to play the call for a speaker, and that's when it happened. Peter! Peter! Who's Peter? Marianne's parents. But he's a memory like an elephant. It mimics everything. No! Don't tell me. Yes. When Blake asked if the painting was for sale, Peter said, Sell the Monet! Sell the Monet! <laughs> Tomorrow. Poor Peter. He was just doing what parrots do. She had to have him put down. You can't have a parrot selling your priceless paintings. He was completely out of control. But she still has the painting? <coughs> yes. I told you that. Don't worry about the painting. It's safe. Fortunately, Medusa had some sort of technical breakdown and started laughing maniacally in the middle of the night. It was a real can of worms. The company had to take her offline, and all digital transactions were canceled. Good for Marianne. Better for the gallery. <laughs> Not so good for Blake. <laughs> Who cares about Blake Slocum anyway? What's this about Blake Slocum? <laughs> oh. Other than being the worst and most incompetent art critic on the planet. And a worm? How did worms have slithered into the conversation? <laughs> How are you, Jason? Still slithering in through the back door, I see. Nice to see you too, Sloane. You're not happy to see me. Not a day in my life. <laughs> this is my new assistant, Meredith Dish. Hi, have we met before? <laughs> <laughs> I'm new in town. You seem familiar. In case you didn't know, Jason is our local Philistine. He isn't fond of art. That's not quite true. Jason hates art. Mumbo Jumbo, I believe he calls it. You forgot pretentious. Mr. Small calls it pretentious Mumbo Jumbo. You two are a perfect pair. This is a busy day, Jason. We have our art event, Brushstroke with Greatness to prepare for. Did you drop by for a specific reason or just to be your normal? Disagreeable self. You do know what last week was. An ordeal. Preparing for breaststroke of greatness. <laughs> Has been <laughs> overwhelming. How soon one forgets. It was the one year anniversary of your Aunt Harriet's passing. A sad, sad day. You seem to have forgotten. I place flowers on her grave. Stolen from another gravesite, I imagine. <laughs> and the one year anniversary of my Aunt Harriet's passing concerns you why? How shall I say it? With that gaping hole above your chin? <laughs> All right, I'll just say it. In the months preceding a passing, 
Harriet and I had gotten close. Ooh. <laughs> that is an image you can't unsee. We were dating. Harriet was my girlfriend. Oh, <laughs> I put a fainting couch in a bucket. I am man enough to admit it. Harriet and I had fallen in love. We kept it on the down low. <laughs> that is disgusting on so many levels, especially the human one. <laughs> Why? Because Aunt Harriet was 95 years old. <laughs> Shame on both of you. Love transcends me. I have a century, it doesn't. Harriet, I don't want to offer. A lovely cream of soup for dinner, reruns of Lords of Wealth. <laughs> I can see it. You've got it wrong. Harris was like. Let me guess. A fine wine. Wine sours. Harris was like an aged cheese. <laughs> Hard, moldy, and with a rind. <laughs> I can't imagine Aunt Harriet would associate with a gutter snake like you. If you come here to upset me, you have succeeded! Now, what is it that you want? This! <laughs> this! <laughs> this. <laughs> This. What is that? A codicil. A codicil? The codicil is a supplement to a will. I know that. <laughs> I was just trying to save Jason Harry for your brains or your looks. Read it. <clears throat> After one year, Aunt Harry turned the management of the gallery over to you? Now! You may weep. Uh, uh, this will never stand up in court. It already has. Oh, you, you're despicable. You didn't love my aunt. You took advantage of her. Aunt Harriet had no idea what she was doing. Oh, she knew, all right. She may have been getting on in years, but there were no flies on that woman. Her mind was crystal clear. <laughs> you had one year to turn profit, and that's not going to happen. As of last week, I am in charge, and you on your way out. You know about running an art gallery. Not a thing, and not that it matters. This place is going to be torn down, and this place will be an extreme sports gym. People want extreme sports. They want extreme fun. They don't want this elitist drivel. Isn't that right, Meredith? People love sports. Extremely. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to you, Jason? When we were growing up, you used to love art. Was it the cat drawing? <laughs> it was, wasn't it? <laughs> I could never get over it. All these years. And it still galls you! Yes, my cat drawing! Mrs. Barsdale looked like a watermelon with whiskers. <laughs> we were in junior high. For him, it was yesterday. And then, and then, when I go to Apple the Color Wheel Test, I had it! You never get over something like that! Uh, grown-ups do? <laughs> you might as well hand over the keys to the gallery now, because it is through. <laughs> Wait, what's this? Here's something you conveniently forgot to mention. Although, Jason Smoke will take over as director, my niece, Sloane Acres, will remain as chief curator. If the next art exhibit after my passing turns a profit, then all management of the gallery will return to my niece. If it does not, Jason Snow will take full control as director. It wasn't worth mentioning. This gallery has never made a profit. Even Harriet admitted that. It will. You'll see. Breaststroke with greatness has sold out. <laughs> Ruth Royal, America's 
most respected art critic will be on hand. <laughs> and we're unveiling a brand new Monet. <laughs> so there. <laughs> After this weekend, the gallery will be in the black. Since my duties as director officially began last week, I notified Miss Rodale her services will no longer be needed. No. You can't do that. You'll ruin everything. That's the whole point. I waited patiently for this day to arrive. All well, of your silly showings and crackpot art, my local nincompoops. Now, to show you that I'm not better, I'll let you have your thing. If only to watch you humiliate yourself. But I'm in charge now, and I'll make sure it's unsuccessful. After this, your gallery won't make a dime, and this gallery will remain profitless. So get ready, ladies. There's a new director in town. Mwahahaha! <laughs> I'll do anything to save this gallery. Anything. That sounds like a threat. Are you making a threat? That's right, Dorothy. And your dog, too. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Ellie. Let's go before I do something. Jason will regret it. Mm -hmm. You're going to regret it. And guess what? You see that? I'll show you the screen, Jason. <laughs> I can't call you a dog. She was talking about you. Oh, that's right. Otherwise, I'd be Dorothy. Never mind. I want to ruin this place and humiliate slow. I don't care what it takes. <laughs> I get a lot of that, but no, I'm new in town. 
I must just have one of those faces. Yes! You do. <laughs> I mean, I'm... <laughs> it's nice to meet you, but if you don't mind, I've got a lot on my plate. New boss, new job. I'm going to need to explain to the right ahead. I'm sure I'll see you again at the show when you can count on it. person you expected to see. Partly right. You're the last person I wanted to see. What about Jason? Tough call. You're equally despicable. I would love to stay in chat, but I have to do something more fun, like pound nails into my head. Call if you need help. Unlike old Jason here, I certainly hope you don't bear me any ill will. I do. I have ill will by the bucket. Can't we let bygones be bygones? We were young, and our passions were at full boil. Get over yourself. The only thing about you at full boil was your ego. You can't really believe I cherish any of the memories of our time together, can you? I'm angry at you for trying to sell my Monet from Peter. How was I supposed to know I wasn't talking to you? Because I didn't sound like a parent then, and I don't sound like one now. <laughs> it was a bad connection. I'm sorry, but I need that painting. Well, not need, but I have buyers who will pay anything to get a hold of it. And I mean anything. It's not for sale. Is there any way I can persuade you? Like, I don't need your money. And if I were to sell it, it wouldn't be you. But we have history. A history full of lies, broken promises, and cheating. Forget history. We'll start anew. <laughs> wouldn't you like to rekindle our romance? If you mean dousing it with a can of gasoline and setting a match to it, I could go for it. That's not exactly what I meant. Get a grip. A whole lot of money will be drink. You can be sure your blobbery lips will be. I'm guessing that's a no. <laughs> Time is running out. I've got to get my hands off that painting. Desperate times call for desperate measures. My life depends on getting a hold of that Monet. Deep in thought, I see. Oh, what? Hey, you're supposed to be plotting on how to destroy the artifact. Are you doing that? Don't worry. I've got a lot of irons in the fire. Good. I want this thing to be a farce and humiliation. I want to make sure Sloane Acres will be able to show her face in this town ever again. <laughs> Speaking of faces, I don't believe I've had the pleasure. This is my new assistant, <laughs> Meredith Fish. Have we? You think you know me, right? You do seem familiar. Why don't we show Blake to the hotel? Well, on the way, you can play 20 questions. It's just across the street. After you. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I was looking for me. Paxton, Tabitha, I didn't expect to see you here. Had I known, I wouldn't have come. That makes two of us. That was unkind, but to be expected. Still paints gnome houses. And you, dropping spaghetti sauce on a canvas and calling it art. A technique I learned, stole from you. Those were the days. For you, maybe, but not for me. Struggling artists shake a cold water flat on the banks of the sand. That wasn't me. That was one after me. Oh, that's right. You were with Blake, who probably hijacked my technique and convinced you to use it. But it all worked out. You have your gnome houses. <laughs> Thank you very much. I am the laughing stock of art critics everywhere. Brush it off. It's all water. Under the bridge. Captain, I am drowning in a sea of artistic mediocrity. It means nothing. You're financially successful. Let's grab dinner tonight. Come on. This is just like the old days. Finishing each other's sentences. Here's a sentence you can finish. Go to, hello? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure, I'll meet you in the lounge.
Sakers? Yes. I'm Agent Art Frobisher, the Art Recovery Team. If I could just have a minute of your time. <laughs> Something I have precious little of. What is it that you want? You're showing your newly discovered Monet tomorrow night, right? Yes. It's the highlight of the show. <laughs> it's been well publicized. That's what concerns me. Several priceless paintings have been stolen recently from various galleries. Do you think something like that might happen here? I'd like to mingle this evening and keep an eye out, just to be safe. It's merely precautionary. If someone is planning something, they will likely be here this evening. Do you have a security system? Uh, yes, the control panel is in my office. I will show you. Hello? Is this the front desk? Yes, this is Blake Salocum here. I'm in the bridal suite. No, everything's all good. Look, I know your book's solid, but I'd like to ask a favor of you. It's for a friend who will be more than appreciative. What I would like to do is... Without further ado, 
Please welcome my boss and my good friend, Sloan <laughs> Akers. about their work in a futile attempt to provide meaning to otherwise incomprehensible drivel. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> let's look up! <laughs> Our very, um, opinionated <laughs> MC and art critic. Thank you, Slough. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I haven't finished yet. I have more to say. You've said enough. Sloane and I go way back, but she's far too humble to admit that she herself is a starving artist. As they say, those who can't, do. Those who can't, become curators. <laughs> uh, but enough about Sloane's uh, disappointments. <laughs> Sloan asked in her introduction, what is art? As I look around this room tonight, I feel that question looms large. I have yet to see anything here that can be considered a piece of art. I can assure you, by the time this evening ends, you will have been exposed to more junk that may be seen in your local salvage yard. <laughs> but let's drill down and get to the nitty gritty of it, shall we? Take this piece, for instance. Who will claim this? Ah, yes, Ellie Cousins. Resume time. So many forgettable moments with Ellie. Now, tell us, what's your favorite medium to work with? I enjoy working with clay. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen clay for a week. Now, tell us about this piece. What do you call it? It is a piece I call Inspiration. Ah, uh, yes, Expiration. Inspiration. It's called Inspiration. I can see it. Perhaps an inspiration to sweep the floors. 
But that's not what it means. Not to you, perhaps, but perhaps to someone else. Take this print of the screen, for instance. Some may see it as a portrait of anxiety. Others may see it as a reaction of a migraine. That is so wrong. I think. Let's ask uh, someone in the audience for their opinion. Yeah, you, sir, what's your name? Uh, uh, John Smith. And just what brings you here tonight, Mr. John Smith? My wife made me come. <laughs> I'd rather be at home watching basketball games. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> now, tell us, John, what is your opinion of this piece? Uh, it's a broom turned upside down with four eyes and a cape. I don't understand it. The beauty of a three-pointer I get, but I don't see how that is art. That's because you don't know anything about art! Now, if you were to understand it, would you have this artwork in your house? I would have it in my outhouse. And what do you say to that, Miss Cousin? He has an outhouse. Nothing else needs to be said. Art is in the eye of the beholder. Exactly. And this man sees nothing but a broom with a face painted on it. Now is not the time, Jason. Sure it is. Let's get it out of the open. Let's ask these folks. How many of you would rather be at home watching a basketball game than looking at a bunch of weird junk being passed off as art? <laughs> what do you expect? These people probably listen to NPR. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. Now, who do we have next? Marianne Nelly. <laughs> ah, yes. It's my understanding that Marianne has a very special surprise for you, but that won't be until tomorrow evening. And for the sake of transparency, we too have some history. <laughs> now, tell us, Marianne, are both these species yours? Mm -hmm. And what do you call them? Night and day. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's a metaphor. It's moronic. It's two canvases. One painted white, one painted black. A simpleton could do this. It's not just the colors. It's all about the technique. There is no technique. <laughs> brush strokes! You got to look at the brush strokes! Unbelievable. Can't you feel the passion unleashed by art? Oh, shut up, Blake. <laughs> Next up, we have Tabitha Kincannon. Everyone is familiar with Tabitha's words. Thank you, Blake. <laughs> and what is this piece called? I call it Note House Number 784. <laughs> <laughs> and just what is your fascination with gnomes? I'm not fascinated with gnomes. I paint gnome houses. Just get to it. How to describe Tabitha's works? They're like a bowl of honey with sugar sprinkled on top of it. There's nothing remotely realistic about the subject matter. It's fairyland stuff. It's theme park art for adults who have more discretionary income than artistic appreciation. They are rattle can on velour. I am one of the world's most successful contemporary artists. Contemporary? You're a postmodernist. My paintings sell in the millions. I won't argue with that. You are very successful. But your real talent is in your art. Your real talent is marketing. Your artwork appears on calendars and office supply stores across the nation. I'm going to have to agree with Blake on this one. Your paintings are hokey. Little gnome houses are creepy. And where is the light coming from? It <laughs> doesn't matter. Of course it matters. There must always be a light source. It's spiritual. It's an inner light. It, it radiates from the soul. People love my work! It's commercial <laughs> drivel. It's the type of art you find on greeting cards and placemats. How dare you call my work drivel? You imposter! You cheat! You hack! You dilettante! Uh, what's a dilettante? It's in your programs. Dilettante? All right, you've gone far enough. Said the man who never had the gas get past first base. Is there any woman in this room you haven't dated? 
<laughs> that figures. He's like a... I brought him as Bosch painting comes to life. Don't bother asking, it's also in your programs. <laughs> I think you're still a little crazy for me. And I think you've suffered a head injury. I would just like to say <clears throat> that art is anything. Anything? If art is anything, then somebody could paint a mustache on the Mona Lisa and call it art. Oh, you mean like this? Exactly. <laughs> it's been done before, you buffoon, by Marcel Duchamp. The movement is called Dadaism. Well, whatever your daddy did. Not <laughs> daddy, Dada. Dada! <laughs> Again. Check your programs, please. Sorry. How can you take this stuff seriously? Because art is the expression of human creative skill and imagination. It is an appreciation of beauty and emotional power. <laughs> A mustache on the Mona Lisa. Whoa! Powerful! Don't pretend you're some connoisseur of the arts defending the tastes of the common man. Your only concern is shutting down this gallery so you can build your precious extreme sports gym here. <laughs> and you, you are no better. I'm an art expert, thank you very much. And I've got a job to do. Next up, we have Paxton Haddock. Oh, we'll take it from here. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Haddock has graciously loaned us one of her invaluable pieces for the night. Paxton, you can stand up. Thank you, Slow. And next to Paxton is Susie Jones. <laughs> oh, Susie is an art student at Bishop. She is here because of her art teacher, Mrs. Jenkins. When it comes to abstract art, a common belief is that a child could paint something like this. So, to test that theory, Mrs. Jenkins challenged her students to create a painting in the style of Paxton Haddock. And Susie won the contest! <laughs> Are you thinking what I'm thinking? 
We better have the coroner's number handy. I think we're going to need it. Ladies and gentlemen, please get the special part of your programs ready.
Marianne? Who saw that coming? Freeze! Did you see that coming? <laughs> Vote now! <laughs> I'm crazy. Why aren't the police investigating? When a work of art is involved, it falls under my jurisdiction. So there's a work of art involved? Yes, miss. You did. Indeed. Miss Monet's Monet is missing. Her Monet has vintage. That painting must be worth millions. Tell me about <laughs> last night. You were here. You saw it. There was so much acrimony in the air, you could have cut it with a knife. Interesting choice of words, jumping in amounts of blood we found in Miss Monet's room. She just might have been stabbed to death. <laughs> the only person with a knife was Blake. It was a table knife. Yet sharp enough to destroy my painting. You said it appears it was a stabbing. Yes, but we're not confirming that until the body is found. The body is gone. Both the body and the painting are missing. You also said the murder occurred in the bridal suite? Yes. But that wasn't Marianne's room. Only one person takes the bridal suite every time he travels. Blake Slocum. <laughs> Is that true? Yeah. <laughs> so that means you and Marianne. Yes. We switched rooms. Oh. Uh, it was the least I could do. Her parent almost sold the Monet to me by accident. After she explained things, I felt perfectly awful. It was the least I could do, but to make amends, I gave her my room for the night. Wait, since it's well known that I always take the bridal suite, doesn't that mean I was the intended target? This turns things in a new direction. If Mary and Lene is not the intended target, we must ask ourselves. Who would want to see Blake Slocum dance? Freeze! <laughs> Do you want to see Blake Slocum dead? <laughs> well, now. I'm free. The man practically destroyed the place. Raise your hand if you didn't want to see Blake Slocum dead. <laughs> Satisfied? The man is a virtual pariah. Let's begin with Miss Haddock. What motive would you have for killing Blake Slocum? Are you kidding me? Blake destroyed one of Paxton's priceless paintings. So of course, Paxton wanted Blake dead. She did it. I did not. She's just bitter. Why? It's a long story that has nothing to do with any of this. Give me a short version. One day, you're invited up to view her etchings. The next, you're on the sidewalk with the recyclables. Did you go to the bridal suite last night? I did. Marianne entered the door. I was dumbfounded. Because you're expecting to see Blake Slocum. Yes. Everyone knows Blake always takes the bridal suite. Had you gone to Mr. Slocum's room with the purpose of killing him? If I did, I'm not dumb enough to admit it. Clearly, you were angry about your painting being destroyed. Of course I'm angry. That painting was worth big money. Fortunately, there's no shortage of pasta and spaghetti sauce. You'll survive. It came for me, but you killed Marianne Monet instead, you beast! That's right, Blake. I went to murder you, but you weren't available, so I killed Marianne instead. I'm not particular. Freeze. If you think Paxton killed Marianne, vote now. Unfreeze. Did you and Miss Monet get along? Not <laughs> We dated once, then she dumped me for Slocum. I believe her words were, finally, a real man. <laughs> what about you, Miss Cousins? Cousins. Cousins, hi. <laughs> no, I did not kill Marianne. And no, I would not describe Blake Slocum as a real man. But would I kill Blake? Hm, you bet. In a heartbeat. You're just saying that. No, I really would like to kill you ever since you dumped me for slow freeze. If you think Ellie killed Marianne, vote now. Unfreeze. 
How many of these women have you dated? Yes. <laughs> well, I haven't dated her, but there's still time. <laughs> you imagine yourself being quite the ladies' man. I don't imagine. I am. <laughs> I don't imagine you are either. What about you, Miss Kincannon? Would it be fair to say you have a motive? Besides being dumped by Blake and having him deliver her a painting. Oh, she has a motive, all right. Is that true, Miss Kincannon? Three. If you think Tabitha killed Marianne, vote now. Unfreeze. Blake Slocum has undertaken a campaign to ridicule my art in all of the important art magazines. I find that hard to believe. Aren't you the most commercially successful artist in America? Even you can't utter the word commercial without making it sound like a disease. I didn't care about the money. All I ever wanted was artistic validation! <laughs> You're not going to find that on the place now. <laughs> Did you go to the bridal suite last night? I went there. But when Marianne threw open the door, she practically threw a fit. She said people had been banging on her door all night and she hadn't gotten a wink of sleep. The question is, did you kill Marianne, hide her body, and steal her painting? No, but she threatened to kill me if I didn't leave. We turn now to Mr. Smoke. Did you go to play Slocum's room? Why would I do that? For the same reason as everyone else. To kill him. Freeze. If you think Jason killed Marianne, vote now. Unfreeze. <laughs> How stupid is that? I'm the one that hired Blake. I don't understand. <laughs> Jason Smote hired Blake Slocum for the purpose of ruining the art event. In that case, we can eliminate Mr. Smote as a suspect. No, we cannot. What kind of detective are you? What better way to destroy the gallery than by having the MC ruin the show and then murdering him? I get your point. The sensational murder of an art critic can certainly do the trick. One minor problem with Sherlock, Blake Slocum isn't dead. <laughs> Could Mary Anne Binet have been mistaken for a man? Every day of the week. <laughs> what about you, Miss Dish? Huh. I have never been mistaken for a man. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I meant. I'm new here. What reason would I have for killing Blake Slocum? Freeze. If you think Meredith killed Marianne, vote now. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Unfreeze. I don't know how I recognize you. You look like Miss Burr, the art teacher. No, you're right. She's the spitting image. Are you Mrs. Burr's daughter? Must be. All right, I admit it. Ellen Burr is my mother, and I would love to see Blake Slocum dead. You can forget about me calling you. <laughs> <laughs> Blake Slocum was the one who got my mother fired. He was blackmailing her. But you could no longer reach his outrageous demands. He exposed her secret. What is your mother's secret? She's colorblind. Aha! <laughs> No wonder I failed the color wheel test. <laughs> Everyone failed it! It killed her changing career, and she gave up on art altogether. Art was her passion. There you have it, revenge. Had I not been a gentleman and offered up my room, it could have been lights out for Blake Slocum. If only that were true. Did you see Marianne Benet last night? Marianne came to the doorway in a slip mat. She opened the door, yawned, said, go away, and slammed the door in my face. Then I heard an awful crash, and she started swearing. Did you go to Blake Slocum's room with the intention of killing him? I don't know. 
if he had entered the door, I don't know what I would have done. <laughs> what about Sloan? You gonna question her? Very well, Miss Akers. Do you have a reason to see Blake Slocum dead? <laughs> Not only Blake, but Jason as well. <laughs> Freeze. <laughs> Do you think Sloan should have killed Blake or Jason? <laughs> well, now. Unfreeze. He tried to wreck the entire event. <laughs> That's why he invited Blake and let him smash things up. Then the gallery would shut down and he could build his extreme sports gym here. Did you go to the bridal suite last night? No. But I wanted to. Blake had tried to ruin everything. Instead, I went to go visit my Aunt Harriet and ask her what she was thinking when she added the codicil and signed everything over to Jason. What did she say? Nothing. The woman has been dead for a year. Did you get the answer you were looking for? No. But only one person <coughs> knew Marianne was staying in the bridal suite. Shouldn't you be questioning him? He was also the one harassing Marianne to sell him the lost Monet. What's your story, Mr. Slocum? I have done nothing wrong. Oh. So I'll tell. <laughs> First of all, the Monet is a fake. <gasps> Lily's at dawn is a fake? I should know. I painted it myself. Marianne had heard the story of the lost Monet and said she'd pay anything to get her hands on it. I just made her dream come true. You convinced her it was an authentic Monet? I didn't convince her. I hired a man working for a Mr. X to sell it to her. She bought the lie and the painting. She was rich. I needed the cash. You are Mr. X. And you're the art critic who authenticated it after she bought it. Bingo. Well, why did she keep the painting hidden for so long? I had my guy tell her that it would be worth a lot more if she kept it a secret for ten years. I figured that'd be enough time for me to steal it back or destroy it, and no one be no one would be the wiser. Was Marianne really that stupid? Rich and dumb. It doesn't get better than that. <laughs> Unfortunately, Marianne ruined everything. By putting the Monet on display. The painting would be exposed as a fake, and your reputation as an art critic destroyed. No matter what I offered, she just wouldn't sell me the Monet. I was desperate. I didn't know what to do. So you wanted her dead? You filthy monster? Yes, but I didn't want to be the one to do it. I was actually hoping one of you would do the job for me. Maybe one of you would be so angry at me for wrecking Rush Drug with Greatness that you'd come to my room and kill me in my bed. Only, it would be Marianne. And you thought Marianne was stupid. That's the dumbest idea I've ever heard. Well, I was desperate. And I didn't think a would-be killer would actually come knocking at my door. How did you plan to steal the painting? I mean, broke into the gallery safe room, but it wasn't there. That's because Marianne said she felt safer keeping it in the room with her overnight. I'd let her take it. The only thing I am guilty of is painting a fake Monet. Well, that and plotting someone's murder. <laughs> that and planning an art heist. But since the artwork has disappeared, I cannot be charged with forgery. If you didn't kill Marianne, it's none of us are lying. Who did? Freeze. Who killed Marianne? Vote now. Unfreeze. What knowledge you from, sir? There's plenty of motive. And since the murder took place in the middle of the night, plenty of opportunity. But without anything else to go on, this investigation is over for the time being. It's over? There's a killer on the loose. The case is not closed. Once the body is located and new evidence is discovered, the investigation will continue. Nobody should plan on leaving town. I will be in touch. We're wonderful people. Shut up, Mike.
What upsets me about all this is that you didn't come here to wreck the gallery. <coughs> you came here to sell painting. Why do you care? It still worked out for you. You came under false pretenses. <laughs> Something isn't right about this. I know it's completely unethical. Oh, I'm not talking about that. There's a vital piece of information we've missed. How do they do it on those detective shows? The person always looks up. Or they divulge a piece of information they shouldn't know. Yes. And if somebody had a bell, it would go ding! Right now, because that's exactly what happened here. You're right, Ellie. Why was Agent Art Frobisher knocking on Blake Slocum's door? Exactly. <coughs> Only Blake, Marianne, and the hotel manager knew that they had switched rooms. Frobisher didn't know that until he knocked on Marianne's door, and Blake answered. It's suspicious. I agree, but it's not enough proof. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> I have it! Lily is at No one knew the name of the painting because Marianne named it herself. Frobisher couldn't have known the name unless he forced Marianne to tell him before he killed her. He hides the body, steals the painting, and then pretends he's investigating the crime. <laughs> You didn't think we forgot about Frobisher, did you? <laughs> now, if you think Art Frobisher killed Marianne, vote now. Unfreeze. Good grief. We've been had by a bogus detective. What do we do now? He couldn't have gone far. Let's grab him. You guys this I out this window. Hey, oh, no, no, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's Marianne! <laughs> <laughs> Are you alright? Yes, of course. Oh, well, what about the Monet? Tell me how he's been ready for tonight's debut. Why are the questions? <laughs> we saw you were dead. dead. Dead? Yes! The Monet was gone, and, and there was blood all over your room. The Mo Monet was gone. This people were banging on my door all night long. Stumbling around in the dark, I crashed into the wall and got a horrid nosebleed. I couldn't get a minute of sleep. So I took Lily's at dawn, requested a different room, and went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> that really is the name of the painting? Lily's at dawn? Well, it sounds a lot better than the last Monet. Or the fake Monet. What? <laughs> uh, 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 how does Agent Art Frobisher know the name of the painting? Oh, you must mean that man I met in the lounge last night. Oh, I told him. Why did it matter? I was going to reveal the name this evening anyway. Oh, I have a question. What's going on? Hey, guys. Susie! Susie. What's going on? It's not being Susie. It's just grown-up talk. Speaking of grown-ups, that hateful man who tore up all our paintings last night, I saw him running across the parking lot with a Monet. Uh, Why that? that? So oh, you can't leave alone for one second. Served him right for smashing my painting over my head. But between us, he was empty handed. He didn't have the Monet. I do. <laughs> I 